Chapter 3, which is about how to manage crocodiles. Next morning, before Moomintroll was even properly awake, he felt in his bones that it was going to be a very special day. He sat up with a tremendous yawn, and then he remembered that this was the day that he and Sniff were to start their great expedition. He ran to the window to look at the weather. It was still overcast, with the clouds hanging low over the hills, and not a leaf stirred in the garden. Moomin Troll was so excited he had almost lost his fear of the comet. Uh, "'We'll find out where this nasty piece of work is, and then try to stop it coming here,' he thought. "'But I'd better keep this to myself, because if Sniff got to know he'd be so frightened that he wouldn't be the smallest use to anybody.' Out loud he cried, "'Up you get, little animal. We're starting now.' Moomin Mamma had got up very early to pack their rucksacks, and was bustling to and fro with woolly stockings and packets of sandwiches, while down by the bridge Moomin Papa was getting their raft in order. "'Mamma, dear,' said Moomin Troll, "'we can't possibly take all that with us. Everyone will laugh.' "'It's cold in the Lonely Mountains,' said Moomin Mamma, stuffing in an umbrella and a frying pan. "'Have you got a compass?' "'Yes,' answered Moomin Troll. "'But couldn't you at least leave out the plates? "'We can easily eat off rhubarb leaves.' "'As you like, my beloved Moomin Child,' said his mother, "'unearthing the plates from the bottom of the rucksack. "'Now I think everything is ready.' "'And she went down to the bridge to see them off. "'The raft was all ready with hoisted sail,' and the silk monkey had come down to say good-bye, but she had refused to go with them because she was afraid of water. The muskrat wasn't there, because he didn't wish anything to disturb his contemplation of the uselessness of everything. And besides, he was rather annoyed with Moomin Troll and Sniff, who had put a hairbrush in his bed. "'Now don't forget to keep on the right side of the river,' said Moomin Papa. "'I shouldn't mind going along, too,' he added rather wistfully, thinking of the adventurous journeys he had had in his youth with the little wandering Hattie Fatners. Sniff and Moomin Troll hugged everyone, the painter was cast off, and the raft began to float down the river. "'Don't forget to give my regards to all the house troll relatives,' cried Moomin Mamma. "'The shaggy ones, you know, with round heads.' "'and put on your woolly trousers when it's cold. "'The tummy powder's in the left-hand pocket of the rucksack.' "'But the raft had already floated round the nearest bend, "'and in front of them stretched the unknown, wild and enticing. "'It was late evening. "'Their rust-red sail hung loosely, "'and the river lay silver-grey between its shadowy banks. "'Not a bird sang.' Even the scatterbrained chaffinches, which usually twitter from morning till night, were silent. "'Not one adventure in the whole day,' said Sniff, who was taking his turn at steering now the current was slower. "'Just grey banks and grey banks and grey banks, and not even an adventure!' "'I think it's very adventurous to float down a winding river.' said Moomin Troll. You never know what you'll meet round the next corner. You always want adventures, Sniff, and when they come you're so frightened you don't know what to do. Well, I'm not a lion, said Sniff reproachfully. I like small adventures, just the right size. At that moment the raft floated slowly round a bend. Here's just the right size adventure for you, said Moomin Troll, pointing. Right in front of them lay what looked like a heap of big grey logs on a sandbank, and the logs were arranged in the secret pattern, a star with a tail. "'There it is again!' screamed Sniff. Suddenly the logs began to move, and produced legs, and then the whole mass slid silently under the water. "'Crocodiles!' exclaimed Moomin Troll, jumping to the rudder. 
Let's hope they don't chase us. The river seemed to be swarming with the monsters whose eyes shone pale green on its surface, and yet more of the fearful grey shadowy bodies were slithering down the muddy bank into the water. Sniff sat in the stern, stiff with fear, and only moved when a crocodile lifted its nose beside him when he beat it wildly over the head with an oar. It was a terrible moment. Tails thrashed the water, giant mouths, bristling with needle-sharp teeth, snapped angrily, and the raft rocked up and down in the most alarming way. Moomintroll and Sniff clung tightly to the mast and screamed for help, while the raft, caught by a little wind that had fortunately just got up, began to make headway down the river. The crocodiles followed in a long line, their cruel jaws agape. Sniff hid his face in his paws, while Moomintroll, who was so frightened he hardly knew what he was doing, got the woolly trousers out of the rucksack and threw them to their pursuers. This distracted the crocodiles' attention at once. They tore at the woolly trousers and fought so furiously over them that by the time every bit was devoured, Sniff and Moomintroll were miles away. "'Whoa, strike me pink!' exclaimed Moomintroll. "'Are you satisfied with that adventure?' "'You scream too!' said Sniff. "'Did I?' said Moomin Troll. "'I don't remember. "'Anyway, it was a good thing Mamma put in those woolly trousers.' Darkness was closing in over the river, so after landing the raft they built a fire between the roots of a big tree and fried pancakes for supper, which they ate in their fingers one by one as they came out of the frying pan. Then they crept into their sleeping bags, and the night fell.' 